So, so far, you have already studied with Philippe first Newton law. So what was first Newton law? So first Newton law was just basically that the summatory of forces on a body is equal to zero. As I was saying, what we are going to analyze from now on is the second Newton law. Newton, sorry. But as written, it means that our forces now in our system are not going to be equal to zero, but are going to be directly proportional to the acceleration of the system, right? If we think about bodies and we think about acceleration, is there an important acceleration that can come to your mind? Are you right now subjected to any acceleration? I saw a yes. Sulai? I'm very bad at this. I'm very bad. <laughs> well, we're flying around the sun. Yes, we are over the sun, but I, but in that case, we are. That's a tricky question because we are rotating over the sun. That's a rotational movement, and I'm gonna arrive there a little bit later. I'm thinking about linear accelerations. Gravity. Gravity, exactly. That's the first force. So. We ourselves, we are subjected to gravity, and that's the first force that we are going to deal with in this course. So don't think I'm not subjected to any acceleration at all. The first one is gravity, all right? Before getting into that, I want to comment on the third Newton's law. So the third Newton's law... is the action and reaction on forces. It means that any force that we impose to a body is going to impose in ourselves another force of same magnitude and opposite sign. It means that if I go and push the wall and I suggest my force of 100 newtons, the wall will impose towards me again at 100 Newton. So the force and reaction, action and reaction law, as a particle system, if we would, if we got the particle A and we've got the particle B, we will have particle A producing a force on A towards B such that B is going to impose a force of B towards A such that force of A over B, it has to be equal to the force of B towards A, but with opposite sign. I know this might not be a still, but I know the concept is clear. I know that sometimes it's a little bit difficult to analyze certain cases. Most of the times it's because it's complicated to see what we call the contact pairs. So the contact pairing between the wall and I, at the moment, is just two. But sometimes the systems are a little bit more complicated, and I'm going to explain it to you with a case of one of my friends. So me, I'm from a very small town in Spain, and I've got a friend that has a donkey, and every day goes to the market with his cart. So you can imagine 
every morning, he wakes up, he takes his card, we've got a rope, and we've got our donkey. So that morning, the, the donkey wake up and said, look, today I'm not even trying because all the forces that I'm going to make to the cart, so the donkey is going to make a force to the cart, are going to be equal but opposed magnitude by the card. So I will have here the opposite forces. The sumatory of forces, my friend, is zero. That means that this card is never going to move. So my friend never went to university, but he knew that every single morning that they tried, they were arriving to the market. How is it possible that the donkey can move the cart? Anybody has any idea? The, yeah, go. There, there's another question over there, okay. Uh, it's applying a force on the ground. Exactly. Very, very well. That's the point. So you have to remember about what I said before on contact pairs. So the trick here is that our contact pair is not just the donkey and the car. We need to consider also the friction that all these bodies can make to the ground. So our cart is just mounted on a wheel. So that's that the wheel involves that my friction with the floor is very, very, very low. The donkey itself with its feet, it can make a great, great, great force. So that means that the force of the ground towards the donkey <laughs> is much higher than the force of the ground towards the cart. And this difference is the one that makes our system move. Is there any question about the contact pairs? We will see a little bit more of this tomorrow when we are going to analyze what we call internal forces of the system and external forces of the system. Is there any further question?